How's bonnet rubbers? <laughs> That's a private joke. It's a private joke. I know, you told me about it yesterday. That's why they're especially in there. <laughs> it's Rusty Smith. Great to see you, John. New owner. Thank you. And I'm the old owner, John Strawn, as you probably know. Here we have 39 years since I sold and saw it. Today is the first time I've seen it in 39 years. Won the Nationals in 1983, 40 years ago. I sold it the next year. Why don't you tell us a few things that you've done? Obviously a lot of things you've done since you picked it up. Yes, uh, between myself and the previous owner, we've got a collaboration of things, and I'm just trying to continue the work and the good work that you put in all those years ago. And uh, Brian put on the, the high-rise manifolds. This and used to have four two-inch SU carbines as per standard V12, and I guess this was done in some sort of tribute towards the fact that it used to have a tunnel ram and two 600s, yes. and now it has a double tunnel ram and two carters, were they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, what chest is that? A carter? Yeah. Right, yeah. I, no, I reckon you'd be on the ball because I and didn't put them on there, so I, I don't That's right. I believe yeah. the manifolds were made at extreme expense from a boat place in America. Yes, I believe so. To suit a V12. Well, but I guess to say they're the only, it's the only V12 in the world that's got twin fours on it. Quite possibly, yes. I and can't imagine a V12 owner <laughs> wanting that sort of performance <laughs> in, a, in an original XJS or XJ. I can see the difficulties uh, arising from it is getting to the spark plug. Mm. That's probably the biggest thing. But it does look good and the tie back to the tunnel rounds when you have the 308. Yep. And I see you've done the front suspension, a la modern rod yep. shop. Yep, tubular suspension, uh, coil over springs. And uh, fully adjustable. detailed the chassis and fully made the firewall look proper. Yes. I see the original rear engine mount bracket survived. Yes, it has. Yes, that was uh, a challenge putting back in because of location and uh, with the manifolds and everything back there and the distributor as well. It's still got a bit to go, I've got to cut on the bonnet yet and sort out the inner guards to finish the wiring off. And this is one of your fronts? Yes, well, brand, this is the first one out of brand new mould. This so, is uh, the first time we've seen a media front made in Australia for what, 40 years? I believe so, well, roughly, yes. Yeah. And it had a HJ print front on it which didn't do it any justice at all up until recently and this is obviously yet to be painted maroon, everybody. Yes, it's, it's a work in progress. Or whatever colour rusty decides to go yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, is a magnificent amount of detailing since I had it. Yes, the braided hose is certainly magnificent. You, you had braided hose on yes, all the time and put your solder here. I don't well. think I had all, all 101 fittings on it. So, um, you even got the fancy, uh, what do you call it, vice with compression tool now to put all the fittings on after lots of cut fingers and stabbed fingers and all the braid. I, <laughs> I used to sell braided lines at the current exchange in the early 80s and it was yeah. still very much a good winner then and were very raw in this country. The guy yeah. that started the braided I used was Barry Garside and he was yeah. in business with the guy that welded the rear end in and the gearbox brackets okay. and the engine yeah. in a tiny little factory at Marrickville called Byatt Engineering. He later on became Speedflow Hydraulics oh, that's the name and that's that. after many years in Tari yeah. sold it to I think Chinese or Taiwanese interest and yep. that speed flow name exists today but it's a much bigger almost aero equip level sort of name. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Steve Russell. Yeah. Hello. He built and owned a band called Ghostly Blues back in the day, a very yeah. famous band as well. Seen in company with Ali Cat at many magazine features, dragged him along yeah. kicking and screaming <laughs> sometimes. Had a little bit of in input to the history of uh, this piece. Indeed. You Part of, part of, part of, work. Part of my work was spurred on by the uh, diligence and dedication of this bloke here. Uh, and, I remember uh, you took the kindly took the 12 volt Chev diff and all the chrome track rods and rear leaf springs when I finally did the Jaguar in 1979, I think it was. Yes. And you took the whole lot and put it under ghostly blue and did. immediately saw a trophy count rise. Oh, right. I did. Yeah. My word. My word. Excellent. It's a, a quick, quick way of having a chrome detailed diff swap, yeah. track rods, and I think I think he did get the Gabriel hijackers as, as well. I got the lot. Yeah. And yeah. I, I got a, a Jag rear that he procured. Use, so I got the lot. And yeah. I pulled the Jag rear apart and chromed mm. it and got Tony to put it in. And I, I had the Jag rear for a couple of years before I did the V12 and the gearbox, as you probably remember. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> and so exactly. tell us what else you think you've I've uh, noticed Woolwood brakes, is it? Uh, Commodore, actually, the cylinder might be a little bit trying to put that on. I don't know a lot with it yet. I've got to get all the proper uh, ADR ones of the SA clamps or crimps on them. 
you're not allowed to have the old ones that we used to have back in our day. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah, unless they've got that stamp on them, yeah, they got to come off now. I put the four-wheel disc brake, brake booster in, ironically because I always had four-wheel disc brakes, but I didn't need it when I had the adjusted jag rear. That was fine with the two-wheel disc HJ booster as it came standard, but yeah. the real truth was it fouled the rocker cover. Oh, yes, of course. So, yeah. it was in so much nonsense for a four-wheel disc that we went looking at was for a squatter. Oh wow. Double dive thing, but yep. not so it's more a physical thing so it fit. But I couldn't believe it when I first measured this up and I yep. I realised that I could do it without touching the inner guards in the day or the yep. firewall. Yep. And that made it quite a more attractive proposition in terms of it being sleeker and more, you know, not butchering it with an yep. option to get it in sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. And once I saw the engine mounts and that being made up and I saw it all coming together, I knew I'd made a good decision. Oh, definitely will, yeah. Still yet to be done. Yeah. Yet to be copied. <coughs> Only V12 holding in a while. It's also such a, a touching moment in history where someone who has created such a unique vehicle yep. has the chance to actually see it again. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. historically significant for sure. Yeah, even, even though um, he created the beast, there's been others that have followed in his footsteps and now it's in the hands of someone who's going to really finish it. Certainly got a lot of passion for it. Also. I just love the work that John did and started and inspired so many people. Uh, how right back in the 80s, a lot of inspiration from John and that even. Mm. I'm grateful I found such a good person to carry on the tradition. I never ever thought when I sold it what would happen to it. I never never thought I would meet the person or, or for all I know they could have wrecked it back in the day. I mean yeah, yeah. I sold it for a shockingly low amount of money and I swapped it for a car which I wish I'd have kept that car with me on that X hatchback. Oh yeah. I wish I still had that but and being a I, was, huh? I was 28 or 29 or something and yeah. all I wanted was money to start a business and yeah. so one sells one's cars and Made sense, yeah. And um, I didn't really pick up on it again until about 2002 or three when it surfaced to the motor show, and I think it was just oh, yeah. after that Brian got it. Yes, motor X, huh? mm -hmm. Might have been motor X at Yes, it could have been. Two, I've got it in magazines at 202 or 2003 or something like that. It's probably been lucky to survive in the current era because it's a genuine Sandman, and everybody wants a genuine Sandman with a genuine <laughs> Sandman stripes and all the rest of it. So it's lucky that it hasn't got. I'll, I'll say butchered and converted back into original because yeah. <laughs> um, the always love everything about it. It's going to continue. Well, well there's a the thousand sandmen and they all look the same, but there's only one alley cat V12 and it looks yeah. like this. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's uh, the credit to what you saw, and I think the, the owners in between have been they've been good because they've kept the garage, yep. so it's kept the rust away from it. Because anything that's been left outside, the it's rust. It's amazing to survive this long. This long. Yes. Yeah. No, For a '75 car. Yeah. yeah, it's had a few you know, changes over the years, um, majority were you, and then just been a few subtle things along the way. So like the accelerator cable that used to pop around the engine bay here, yeah. that was pretty ordinary. And I worked out that because it's solid now, I could get away with a short accelerator cable, I didn't need a lot of spring, so I took it backwards and through the back, I turned it to the back there. Straight so out the, the accelerator cable. linkage is much more functional yeah. as well. And those braided cables, they had a tendency to coil up and they were just flopping everywhere in the garden. And I've seen a few changes inside as well, as you've probably known. So, so they're the original seats, they're a lot worse for wear, unfortunately. And we haven't cleaned them yet. Amazing, they're still in one piece. Yes, well, uh, one of them's a little bit sadder than the other one. I think it's had a, a pretty rough life. Uh, but everything else, uh, the original, well, I say the original steering wheel, the steering wheel that you had in it, John, I think you might have wanted to show, did you? Back in the day? I did. I yeah. noticed I've signed it for you. Yes. Completely matching tortoise shell everywhere on the dash. It's, it's a complete standard housing, and that's about the beginning and the end of the standard part of it. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, had pieces put in to get the, the uh, gauges back at the right angle, so yep. that you're not, so you can actually read them when you're driving it. That's amazing. And it filled in a few other panels to make. Ultra modern yeah. digital dash sunk into a tortoise shell. Thing and still in the original 1975 housing. Very, yeah. very nice. Took it away with all the ADR requirements mm. for the red day, so that's the next thing. Must look famous at night. Oh, I can imagine it will. <laughs> I say it to because I don't have a battery in it. <laughs> Alright. I've got to connect all the wiring up yet, so I haven't quite got the phone. I'm a bit of a rush getting here. So I remember back in the day, at shows, 
you always had skeletons hanging around. Oh yeah. And I just had to buy a couple of cheapies. I reckon you had one hanging out the sunroof there at one point. Yep. So I was going to get your guidance on where I should on. sit it. I got a hat. It's not quite the same hat. I had him sitting There's across the high bit in the middle. We'll see. You've got... oh. I didn't have these seats in it when you I did. had that. No. No, they were the standard. So. You'll probably find he sits too high, but I would have had his pelvis on top of the headrest or something like that. Let's give that a crack while we're here. Just while we're talking, for the fun of it. Hang on those knees, Oh, they were. Back in the day, that was something that would drag people in, and skeletons were not passe in those days. They were... And the kiddies that'll go, oh, look at that, mummy. He's a happy Believe it or not, I got magazine plugs that go, Showmanship and just something to make people draw. Look, you know, look at that, look at that. And at the time, it had more to do with the murals. That's the second set of murals on it. The first set had more of a, a little bit more of this sort of. There you go. This was a magazine feature. I'm actually in that. You just won't see me, but if, this was in the old days when we had real smoke machines. And I'm on the end of that 240 volt cord. You can just see there, hiding around the back, crouching down, moving the smoke machine round, so we could do this sort of time delayed thing and yes I did hold her and held her up and put her on the boot like that she didn't get up there with those stilettos on her own trust me <laughs> and this is again from a street and custom or street and strip magazine feature again with the cats that's the same girl there it is with the, those seats in it that's when I first put the V12 in it you can see it's got the four two inch SU carburetors on it the engine as, I, as we agreed pretty much remains the same other than the config of the carbies and manifold and it got a, it got a fair few magazine like it got 16 or 17 magazine features in its time I was lucky in that respect and these are pages from some of those magazine stories there's an interesting shot of the panel beaters in 1981 rubbing back an undercoated alley cap that's right back to a bare body shell to get one of Sydney's first 2K acrylic lacquer jobs. Again, we've superseded that by so much that technology's raced forward. There it is again, same sort of shot. A few mates and that sanding all this rock hard primer back and making your fingers bleed and such silly things. And these are shots of putting the V12 in and building the cross members. There's a good shot. There's me pretending to put the V12 block into a Cortina. Of course, it wouldn't fit, but that was the whole laugh of the story. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And um, there's the gearbox going in with its cross member. These are all, most of these are taken over at Bio Engineering at Tony's place. There's the aforementioned engine bracket oh, yes. I mentioned earlier. This is doing the coop doors. That's his, if you look there, he's jigsawing the frame off the door and holding still so the photo could be taken even in those days. <laughs> and um, this is Ron Hagstrom. And here he is again doing the radiusing of the doors to the body. And again there. And there's that, that mod done. That got quite a lot of done work done there at Maruba Smash Repairs. And these, these are all in magazines of various stages of the rebuild getting done. You didn't see too much of that happening back those days, a full story and a rebuild. No, but he wanted you to see. Yes. Because they were afraid you'd either copy them or you'd see how much bog they put in it. Yes. There's the rear end when I first did it. That is all brush painted chassis. And for all those that would make comments such, we didn't need to do such work in those days. There was no such thing as a rotisserie. There was no such thing as doing a, a chassis or a body off a chassis to do that detail so we all did it with brush paint and enamel and um, as you can see there you wouldn't be able to tell if you really in the day this is a 1980s detailing job like 43 years ago we did this so poo poo to anyone who says they took their body off that was good for you um, that's just after I sold it that's down by a rail line somewhere in Western Sydney again you can see the cat theme and not much more I can say there. This is out on La Perouse at Bear Island. Quite a historic place. You can't get up there anymore. That's on the grass facing the heads on, on Bear Island at La Perouse. And that was for custom vans and trucks, that, that shoot. Shot by Dave Petrusma and later republished in Street Machine magazine when it was ACP. 
and again, a, quite a good shot of the engine bay as I put it in, the interior as I left it. And then, again, this is pre, this is before it, this is pulling me into many, many magazine pages, many features of, I was happy to let everybody see every stage of the way because I felt it was quality workmanship and it was done to the level I wanted it done and I was paying the bill, so I took plenty of photos and magazines, love riding, Love running photos. Legendary Frank Lee. Oh Frank dear. Lee. Yeah. And there's the guy who did the murals and yep. this is in no small part responsible for the attraction of the van. That's Frank Lee, he's still going. Hi Frank. Um, still doing murals, all that not on cars that size anymore I believe. I have some other work done by him, it's magnificent. Frank's 92 now and still kicking on strong. Wow. 92, that's incredible. Uh, still a great artist too. 90 or 92, I forget now, but he's, he's still doing well. Thank you, sir. Very good. Did have all those there? There's one little feature I've been working on, I like to show you around the back if you've got time, yeah. mate. We'll sit yeah. there. You, haven't, you haven't seen this, Steve? So it's my little mm. project I'm working on. I'm only going to get the one side in because I'm going to bring it up to the back. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> you see a black one, let me know. <laughs> Not quite set up properly. Oh yeah, this is magic. The idea here. This is incredible. They're triple tar lights, and somewhere in there, there's a correlation between the V12 and the six tar lights. And Rusty's done this one on his own. It's going to be six. This is very Ferrari-ish, which almost makes the marquee level of the Jag V12 in its racing history in the XJS form. Now we've got. This is a tremendous amount of work and something I never would have thought of doing, but now I've seen it, I'm amazed I didn't think of it. The, you'd have to see this with the tail lights and the blinker in place. This was all done by Rick Pacey, and this was all done by Rusty, as we speak, Russell Smith. And the Russell idea is, because the uh, Jag V12's got four headers, there's two exhausts, in it, in it, three into one, four times, Two each side. They should come down on the E-type gag. <laughs> they ran uh, basically four exhausts up the back. So I'm duplicating that. They just ran hot dogs. Going to do the same thing. Uh, the only twist is we're going from two into three at each side. So it's sort of reverse of what they did on the old six cylinders. Should be something different. It'll all be nice, nice polished stainless when it's done. It's a magnificent addition and it certainly fits the bill. Looks like it was always Thank planned you. that way. Just a Excellent. bit of fine tuning, yeah? yeah. When, when you see it more, it'll be so sleek and it'll look so good with the right tips coming out. It'll just get an amazingly good look from behind. And so much work. Subtle differences. All, all that body work, all that and that was done in oh, about 1979 at Rick Pace's. And, um, I ran it that way with just a Jag rear for quite some time until I did that rebuild with extended the spoiler, one piece rear gate, no murals, it used to have a gate with murals on and the door jams and a few other bits and pieces were done in 1981 for it to ultimately win the Nationals in 83. Yeah. And one of the tricks are the, 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 the same bodybuilder Rick Pacey did the work on mine Yeah. and you just said 1979. Yeah. I've just found out this moment right here that when my vehicle was down at Rick Pacey's in 79, yours was never there at the same time, but no. they were both there at the same year. Oh, wow. Well, oh, yeah. That was a year Rick did a lot of work then, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the vans fed him quite a bit of work at the time, yeah. because he did Alien there as well. That yeah. couldn't have been too much later. That was Greg's. And that would have been 80. 79, 80 because that was penthouse and he was supposed to beat Alicat in the future it was supposed to be more radical than Alicat because we had the top shot. Yeah. Never got the light of day apparently and got crushed in Wollongong recently. Very sad. For scrap. And there's other things you don't find out about, you know, I get talked to John every day, obviously. And I was reading my little stories and I didn't know until I read it, I said this has got to be rubbish, but you actually get a magnet, you can throw a magnet up here and a magnet will stick there still. That's what. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, no one believes that because 90% no. of the top roof spoilers are glass. Yes. And they just bobtail them on and glass them in, but that was steel. Yeah. So quite the inspiration there was actually the same Commodore that had oh. the VB bonnet. The, the inspiration was that sort of longer, sweepier bonnet on the 
VBs, VCs when they came out, though, especially the Brock type. Yes. V whatever you know what they were. VKs or VK. V, yeah. Brock VKs. That was imitated. <laughs> that was an original Bob Talis look, probably that much of it. Although yeah. it's higher and squatter, yeah. but the carrying of the length yeah. was sort of symmetrical with the extension of the bonnet. There was this sort of trying to keep it as best I could. You get very. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard ideas. coming up with new ideas sometimes. It's yeah. very hard to be creative and, and not copy someone else. Yeah. These well, days, people copy what we've done. Yes. <laughs> we'll go back to Sam now as we started. Mm. <laughs> Why would you waste your time? One of the things we uh, showed us in the photos here before was the bonnet had been extended at some point. And I don't know if I can find it quickly, but. It had a VBVC Commodore lip. There it is. There. Yes, in you that can see one. it. So on here you can see that the bonnet actually extends out over the front. And it's and cut into the Monza front. Yes. It's HJ bonnet with about that much of a VBVC welded to it. Yes, it's quite unique. And the really interesting part is that bonnet, if we've got time to step around the front here, the carpet, the red carpet, the H3 kind of provided, this is the same bonnet that was actually oh, on yeah. it when it was done. And when they lost the front, the tack wells are still here. So I'm quite happy to leave those there for the time being. Uh, and you can see where they've cut it off. Almost an archaeological find, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, it's, it's one of those little things, it's one of those little twists. They did that when they couldn't replace the front, so they just reefed that off and put it back to a HJ prim front. Yes. And so. yeah, now, next step is to work out when I do this hole in the bonnet. I'm going to do that. Oh, I would love to do that. <laughs> That's why I went with the four two inch SUs because I could shut the bonnet and not have to cut the bonnet. And you know, I thought it was sleeker, but and the boys in blue would have left you alone for that reason. Oh, uh, more that I wanted the sleek look <laughs> no. of the Jag, and you know, the same with the yeah. coupe doors. I wanted some sort of sleek, fast look without it looking. Although having said that, I had the Mons the front, and they've always been a a, a bruisey speed sort of front, haven't they? You yeah, know, very true. Thank you, John. Thank you very a pleasure much. to catch up with you once again. Of sorts. Thank you. Good yeah. to see you. I can't imagine anyone better served to look after the future of the land. Thank you. Just leave one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll, we'll light something up. Maybe a Sandman Park and we can yeah. stick petrol on it and I like burn it. it. <laughs>